So the second stage of labour. This is the part of labour where your baby will be born. It's the moment that you've been working towards throughout your whole labour. You're 10 centimetres dilated, your midwife won't be able to fill any more cervix. In terms of what's happening biologically at this point, um, your oxytocin levels are going to be really, really high. This is going to be stimulating your uterus to contract as hard as it possibly can. And your endorphin levels should be so high there's no muscular tension left at all. Every other mammal births through what we call the fetal ejection reflex. And this is where these oxytocin levels combine with the endorphins in your body. There's no um, tension or resistance in any of the muscles that run down the birth canal or in the pelvic floor. So as the uterus contracts, the babies literally slide out of their body. That's what you see when you watch a wildlife program on television. It's unusual for humans to experience the fetal ejection reflex in a hospital environment because the environment's not quite right. If we think about that birthing bubble that we want to experience, we quite often trigger a bit too much adrenaline. So maybe the lights are a little bit too bright, maybe you feel a little bit fearful, and that's enough to create muscular tension in the birth canal and the pelvic floor, and that slows down the progress of your baby down the birth canal. We want to give you the best chance possible of, um, of your baby gliding down the birth canal. So we're going to think about how you're breathing during this stage of labour. When we imagine this stage of labour, we always think about people pushing their babies out. You see them going bright red in the face, holding their breath and pushing as hard as possible. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. What you see most people doing on television when they're giving birth to their babies is taking a deep breath in and then pushing like this like they're having a big poo and you see them going bright red in the face they're creating an awful lot of tension in their bodies particularly around the jaw and you find that if you tense your jaw really really hard you also tense your pelvic floor so you're creating the muscular tension that you're having to push your baby against also, when you are doing this purple pushing, you're tensing the wrong muscles. You're tensing all the muscles in your arms and across your shoulders and in your hands. And those muscles are just burning calories. They're going to have absolutely nothing to do with birthing our baby. You'll also find it's very, very tiring to push like that. The contractions during the second stage of labour can last up to a minute and a half. And you can really only hold your breath and push for about 12 to 15 seconds. So a midwife would be expecting you to get sort of three or four big pushes into each contraction. But if you tried doing that, you'd find that you did one big push and you'd be sort of panting for breath afterwards. The second push wouldn't be as strong and the third push would be pretty non-existent. So you're using an awful lot of effort at this point of labour by using that breathing technique. Instead, we want to give our bodies the best chance of using that uterine muscle. Remember, we can't control the uterus. The uterus is a muscle that we can't control at all. The contractions are an involuntary movement. They're stimulated by the flow of oxytocin and their strength is governed by how much oxygen is reaching that muscle. If we're taking a deep breath in and holding it to push, we're starving that muscle of oxygen. You're also reducing the amount of oxygen that's going to your baby. We need to find a way where we can breathe through these contractions, release the muscles of the pelvic floor and the birth canal, and make sure as much oxygen is getting to the uterus as possible so that those contractions are really, really strong and powerful. So rather than taking that deep breath in, holding it and pushing, we're going to take a deep breath in and squeeze our lower abdominal muscles, just like you do when you're having a really deep cough. So the best way to practice this before the onset of labour is to maybe try it next time you need to go and have a poo. That's going to be the closest that you can get to practicing this breathing technique before you're actually giving birth. The first thing to do is find the muscles that you want to use. If you find your hip bones and you slide your fingers gently forwards and you have a deep throaty cough, <coughs> just like that, you'll find you feel those muscles moving a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is take a deep breath in and squeeze the breath out just using those lower abdominal muscles. So you take a deep breath in and go, squeezing that breath out 
almost making a throaty noise in the back of your throat. I like to think of it as like breathing just the same way as Darth Vader does in Star Wars. So you take a deep breath in and go just like that. You can feel yourself squeezing the lower abdominal muscles on. You should feel your pelvic floor releasing. You'll be able to use that breathing technique throughout a minute and a half's worth of contraction. So you'll take a deep breath in and squeeze the breath out. Take another deep breath in and squeeze the breath out. Take another deep breath in and squeeze the breath out. This is quite a difficult breath to master. And if you're worried about it, I'd really recommend coming to one of our essential preparation for birth workshops, which are completely free of charge and take place all over Suffolk. One of our teachers can help guide you through this breath so that you have a little bit of practical experience before your labor. There are lots of different ways and different positions in which you can give birth. We always imagine that we're gonna give birth lying flat on our backs on a bed with our legs in the air. Actually, that's a really difficult position to give birth in. It makes it very difficult for your baby to slide down the birth canal because they're actually moving slightly uphill. Lots of people choose to give birth in a different position. If you really feel that you want to lie down, it's absolutely fine to do that. But try lying on your left-hand side and get your birth partner to support your leg. This position is actually very positive to give birth and it reduces the risk of your, uh, of your perineum tearing. The perineum is the piece of skin between your vagina and your anus and it can tear during birth. You can reduce the likelihood of tearing by massaging that area with various different oils. Best to choose a natural oil and to patch test it on the skin before um, you start massaging your perineum. If your perineum does tear, you won't feel it at all. As your baby moves down through the birth canal, you feel those, those fibers will gently stretch. They'll get to the point where the nerve endings are so stretched that you won't feel if there is a little graze or a little tear. So it's really nothing to worry about. It's also during this phase um, that you will probably feel as though you're going to do a poo. And this really scares an awful lot of women. If you think about what's happening to your body, your baby's head is coming down through the birth canal and it's going to put tremendous pressure on your back passage. So it will feel as though you're going to poo. You probably won't because as we spoke about in the first video, before the onset of labor, it's very normal to experience some diarrhea. So there's probably nothing in your gut anyway. And even if you do, midwives are fantastic when it comes to maintaining your modesty. So you'll probably never know about it. Your partner will never know about it. Midwives are magicians. They'll make everything disappear. It's really important not to feel held back when you're bearing down by that feeling. Some people find it a little bit scary, but try to ignore that it's happening and just go with your contractions and follow your body's urges. If you do find that you've had a little bit of a tear during your birth, your midwife will talk to you about having a few little stitches down there. And this is done with a local anaesthetic. So again, you shouldn't feel anything at all. But if you do have any concerns, have a little chat to your midwife um, during your labour or before the onset of your labour, your community midwife will be able to talk to you about that as well.